this painting is called Home of Satellites because the moon is a satellite, not a planet. And I really feel the moon, the lunar, loony, lunacy sort of qualities. I love this painting so much. I did it on the same day as On So I Will. I was enamored with the concept sketch, yet somehow I completely forgot it existed <laughs> until I was working on On So I Will. It was many pages back in my sketchbook now, and it was like burrowed with like other sketches that were so different. I really don't know where this came from. It was so random, but I was like, oh, this is so dynamic. And while I was painting, the con a similar concept sort of popped into my mind and it jogged my memory that this even existed. The movement, the motion this captures. I can't even articulate the feelings it induces. It's just so wonderful. And I just, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> After I finished On So I Will, I was in such a good mood. I just knew I had to paint this too. I think it's because I had pizza for breakfast. I don't respect the notion that time dictates what food you should eat and when. I don't think anybody should. I hate, hate breakfasty foods like milk or eggs. I hate anything egg forward, the smell, the texture. This is my autism in full rage. <laughs> like, absolutely. But that's why I hate fortune cookies and waffle cones. Here's a story. When I was five and I couldn't start school, I spent a portion of the summer with my aunt and uncle before I went to my Nana's during the school year. Maybe it's because my mom didn't believe in or couldn't afford daycare. I don't know, still to this day. But my uncle bought me and my cousin, who's the same age, ice cream cones. And he found out when I only ate ice cream, which I don't really like ice cream either. It's just because it was chocolate, though <laughs> more, more autism layers. Though, I really don't like chocolate, especially milk chocolate. I prefer bitter, dark chocolate, specifically like 70-something percent cacao. I ate the ice cream, like I said, but not the cone, because I don't like waffle cones. At the time, he made some remark. I didn't respond to it loud, because I'm really, I, I think I might actually, I don't know what the qualifying characteristics are of it, but I think I might fit the parameters of having selective mutism. Most people that have ever met me always talk about, like, I'm very quiet. I can go such a long time without talking. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, I didn't respond out loud about how he said something about, like, having ice cream in a cup next time. Mind you, I didn't say anything aloud, but I was like, oh, hell, no the fuck, you don't. You won't. What I won't do is eat ice cream with a spoon from a cup when ice cream is iconically served in a cone. It was at a Dairy Queen, too. Besides that, I hate spoons. When you eat with a spoon, you taste the spoon, not the food. I watched analysis videos about the game Little Nightmares, and they're like, why does this, why did this, was there a certain character who really hated spoons? And I was just like, oh, oh, I feel you. I feel you. I do. Not because I've been digging with him, but I just hate spoons. I really hate spoons. I eat rice with a fork. I've eaten soup with a fork. Like most recently, a gumbo I ate with a fork. If he had ever gotten me ice cream in a cup with a spoon, I might have thrown it on the ground. I'm not that type of person or that type of kid, I swear. I'm, like, normally quite amicable, I would think, but I can't. Why even bother? And waffle cones are cheap. I was five in 2005 slash 2006. So, yeah, come out of your pockets for an ice cream cone that's, like, really worth some sense. This is actually... A decent segue because I've been meaning to voice grievances about my favorite Buffy the Vampire Slayer character. Second to Spike, Anya. I loved Anya. I know she wasn't a main character, but I she, f grave Miss Justice how they did her. Grave, grave. I loved Anya. The show, having watched the series over and over so many times and owning the complete box set, I can say I really feel from the bottom of my heart she brought something very special to that group of dry-ass individuals. It wasn't interesting in my opinion, in, in my opinion, until she got there. I think she really represented an autistic coded character very well, especially a woman. It's really hard to think of, like, female autistic characters on shows. She's the only one I can really think of. I also love that a vengeance demon, she being one, like, they only avenged women. Like, yes, yes. Women are, like, all the time treated poorly. Like, whether it results in death 
or not, I don't think that really matters. But, like, really, though, violence against women, especially from, like, male precipitators, it's, it's out of bounds. Like, the amount of violence and, like, cruelty, disproportionate. There's a whole psychological thing about behind it. Like, women are more inclined to harm themselves than they are others, and men are more likely to, like, release, <laughs> exert their upset out into the world. Does, I, I don't, I, I can't wrap my mind around it. <laughs> but anyway, um, the series goes on, and she gives up her whole identity for bum-ass Xander Harris. I said it. I said it. Willow and the others treated her so poorly. Like, most of the time when she was there, they belittled her experiences and feelings in favor of Xander or, like, their own, like, stupid group agenda. They weren't all that, let's be honest. Willow, Willow especially, after after Buffy's mom died, it really made me really, oof, I, oh, I did not like Willow after that. And I'm like, I was never really a huge fan of Willow, not until she turns evil, I guess, and that that doesn't happen until, like, it really proves that a witch is only a nudge away from a vengeance demon. Season 5. And then, when Anya dies, oh, and she was always so scared of dying in an apocalypse and bunnies. It was, I was so sad. She just wanted to be a good human, belong, be loved, and appreciated, but she never was. They only notice that she's missing at the end when they're waiting for Buffy and they're like, wait, Anya's missing. Meanwhile, she's dead, alone, probably still heartbroken. She was never a good, like, g she was never good in physical combat. Except, oddly, that one time she fought Buffy, and that was dumb. It, it was like, what did you think she was gonna do? How else would a vengeance demon get over a devastating event like being left at the altar? You know, but by ending more men, like, clearly... That's how she would get back on the fucking saddle, dummies. Ugh, they never accepted her for who she was. And Buffy. Buffy was annoying, let's be honest, not to sound like Cordelia or Faith, but she complained a lot. And she had it pretty good. Like, oh, your issue is that too many people care about you. I guess. You know who didn't complain? Kendra. Yet she was ended by the swipe of a most likely dirty fingernail. That really... Ooh, that's nasty. That's nasty. Anyway, if you take anything away from this, besides that I am very much on the spectrum of autism, and I will find injustice with anything, anywhere, even fictional things, um, it is art. Truly art. Art goes on, so I will. That's my new thing. Farewell. Please consider um, subscribing, liking, 